This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Handy filmmakers, I'm Nick Bodmer. I'm Griffin Hammond. And today I have a simple question I want Nick to help me with. Are okay. there any webcams out there, including these two that I'm trying out right now, that can do well for a podcast that could replace my nice camera here? <laughs> I feel like this is a question I'm constantly asked by other people. Like, I'm fine with the camera I'm using. Yeah, we'll see. I, uh, you know, I've used cheap webcams, and the answer to that is definitely no. But I think you're showing me some high-end webcams, so now I'm now I'm excited and interested. Well, that's what I want to know. I mean, the the question I get a lot from people who don't own a mirrorless camera or a DSLR. I mean, because the obvious answer for most people who have a nice camera is just use your nice camera as a webcam if if you're able to, if you have a spare and you have the connections, but. If you are just someone who wants to record a nice looking long interview, like a 45 minute podcast or something, I feel like the traditional webcams cannot do this. Like, cause they hunt for focus or they hunt for white balance. They just can't handle like a long static shot, shot which right. is, do you have a webcam you ever use? So I have the Apple Studio Display, which has a very poor quality webcam built into it. Uh, yeah. Occasionally, I will use that for just Zoom meetings, but never for anything recorded. Um, so my current setup is Apple Studio Display, the webcam right here, and directly behind my monitor, hello, uh, <laughs> is uh, my Sony a7C, and it is permanently behind my monitor. Right. I don't really ever take it off. This is all I use it for. And in general... I use that for everything. So I have that hooked up with a Camlink 4K uh, to my Mac, and it's it's really my webcam. If it's a short, quick meeting, or I just need to turn something on, and I don't have the lights on, I don't. Sometimes I don't do all that, but uh, I think I use it 80% of the time. Yeah. Well, yeah, and just like you, I'm using a Panasonic Lumix GH5 Mark II as my primary webcam. It's hooked up through a Camlink uh, 4K, and it it does the job really well. But I think one of these cameras I want to try out today is one that you did. Maybe you recommended this to me in the last year. I feel like you sent me the link for this Opal C1. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say I recommended it just because I haven't used it, but it sounded very interesting. And I thought you should try it and tell me if it's yeah. good. So I'm glad we've come to this um, because I've heard some good things. I've heard, you know, that it's not going to replace a full frame camera, but you tell me. Right. Well, so you're actually looking at it right now. This is uh, usually we do this audio, we do this podcast just in each other's ears. Uh, but today we're doing a Zoom meeting. The tr the standard use case for these things uh, would be yep. through a Zoom meeting. Uh, right now, I have all of these cameras coming through OBS, so you can sometimes see my uh, my main feed that I want to send you. You can sometimes see the Opal C1 here, and then I also have the Insta360 is the other camera I'm playing with, this Insta360 Link. Um, interesting, interesting. Which I'm already very impressed by. Uh, at the moment, I don't have it framed very well, but you'll see that I can actually control that. Uh, but let's take a look first at this, at this Opal C1. Um, because, of course, both these cameras have, like, a little dashboard tool where we can fix things. So right away, I'm looking at the shot, and I, and I look, like, very pale and yellow at the same time i don't know how that's possible you're a little ghost like yeah like a yellow <laughs> ghost so let's see what so my is settings adjustable? are so are you an auto right now or what are we looking at uh yeah i mean this is just like i just plugged it in and turned it on and this is what i look okay. like uh let's see what is this uh, oh yeah let's let's go to the camera um, but while you're while you're you poke around there the image quality looks really good like it, it looks like very high definition and crisp um a lot of detail in the beard and in your hair, like it, it's definitely resolving yeah. a nice image if you can adjust at some the, of the color tone maybe. At the moment, it's sending 1080 video to OBS, but I can bump it up to 4K. Let me try to do that. Let's see if that breaks everything. Um, let's see. And it may, it's warning me and that it may break some apps, but let's see. I still want to try it. Uh, I can't tell if anything looks different on your end. Not that you would see the 4K, but I just figured maybe it would like look different or something. I didn't notice a change. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's let's play around with these camera settings here. Oh, you can turn up the bokeh. Let me try that. My bokeh oh, is already... Oh, I noticed that. Oh, you noticed it when I clicked it on? Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. I see that. I had it turned off entirely. So I can crank it all the way up to 
this is faking an F 0.7, which no, well, actually it's doing a pretty good job. It's locked on your eyes and your ears slightly out of focus. I guess the question is like, does it ever get part of my face wrong and like blur my hair too much? I feel like it's blurring like this hair too much at the moment. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. That's a little too much, but I thought the, whatever the halfway down was, was, was pretty good. Yeah. So let me go back to where I was. It was at F14, fake F14. Uh, So clearly, yeah, this is just, it's faking bokeh by just doing the same thing the iPhone does, like blurring everything it doesn't think is a face. But it, it looked like it did a nice job with it. Now here's there's a zoom button. Ooh, ooh, that was fun. <laughs> it did it in a nice way. You know what I mean? It did a nice push in. Yeah, oh, it was like push a. In. I guess it's zoom in, but. So this um, is this is the two point five x zoom, and I can pull it out to. I wonder why I can only pull it out to one point four. It's like it's either on. It's on or off, and you can't yeah you can't dial it all the way to back to one. Interesting. Uh, and then there's a button called Face Lock, which I have a feeling this is going to. And do you use know the is zoom. that zoom a digital zoom or is it actually a physical zoom? I mean, the lens I'm looking I at would... looks so tiny. I can't imagine it's like doing any sort of physical yeah. zooming. Uh, and then let me turn on Face Lock, which I'm assuming is going to zoom in and look at my face. And then if I move over here, it does kind of like a pan and scan. <laughs> I the Ma- the Apple Studio display does that and not very well so yeah it looks strange to me I'm not sure I would ever use this but I don't know it 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 potentially solves a problem if you're like moving around a lot in your live stream or something and for people who just don't know how to frame anything you know they can just sit down and it just kind of does something good yeah and I can see that the next button here is to turn the video off but I actually. That reminds me that one thing I really like about this Opal C1 is that it comes with a little magnetic lens cap that you could just slap on. I can't see you anymore. <laughs> but that's what I, I especially want things like this in a webcam. Like I don't trust that the webcam is not on all the time. And so to have an yeah. actual physical cover is great. And it's nice that it's magnetic. Uh, I still haven't come across just where are the, where's the color settings? Is that in effects here? Uh, oh, there's something called touch up, which we can probably like soften my face. Do I look very soft now? Mm, I didn't really, well, maybe a little, I don't know. Might be hard to see in zoom. I can see it on my end. You're a little, you're a little angelic now. And then underneath that is coming called tone sync, which as sync I turn it, it up and turn it down, I don't see anything. What happens if I click it off? I'm not noticing a difference. It doesn't, maybe it doesn't know what my tone is. Uh, I'm still not at a place where I see how to do color balance. That might be in manual. Here we go. Now we're in manual, manual mode. I can set the brightness. I feel like I have to turn it down because my face is looking too hot. But maybe I want to leave brightness the same and turn down exposure. I don't know. Let's turn down exposure. That's too much. And then contrast is fine vibrance here's white balance okay now i can pull it along the yellow blue slider but there better be a tint control because i'm just like yeah you're very magenta yeah i can't seem to like dial in well that's getting getting close close, but i don't know i feel like i'm like having some trouble with like the reds and greens and is that better than I started with? I still I still look too red now. You're a little red, but other than that, I think it is a better image. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard for me to dial this in. And then, yeah, I'm just surprised I don't see like, like a tint. I don't see the option to push it greener. And I feel like within what I've just said, I feel like it's still doing like some auto exposure and I don't know. I don't feel like well, I have these a lot are kind of you know they're smart, right? They've all got AI controls yeah. and things like that, right? I mean, I would say they're not designed for people who want to go in and make too many changes. Just people who want to look better than their webcam. Well, and the other thing I wonder, I always wonder about like traditional webcams or or a lot of cameras you might throw at at a use case like this is. I have ND filters right now on both cameras. I'm shooting with two different GH5s right now. Uh, one is filming me and then one is filming the the, sh- the like another the shot of these cameras yeah <laughs> uh 
uh, and they're, they both have ND filters on right now, and I'm blasting a lot of light at myself at the moment. So I just I wonder, wonder when over, I throw... Maybe you're overloading it. It's not designed yeah. for a studio lighting situation. Is it made for this yeah, much light? Know. Yeah. Well, let's, let's jump to the uh, Insta360. Insta360. Which is framed wrong, but like, I'm already impressed by this camera because I feel like the quality looks more normal, just right out of the box. And also, one thing I did not expect that I would think is this cool is just that this camera is essentially like on a little gimbal. It's a pan tilt. Yeah. So this and is you, not digital moving around. The, the, the actual camera is moving. Yeah, the camera's actually... Oh, I can see. <laughs> wow, I can turn quite quite far around. That's pretty oh, cool. Yeah. And the, the focus is nice. It, it pulled that into focus real quick. And yeah. It's got some... Is it doing fake blur, or is that real blur that we're seeing? I mean, with that zoom level, it might be real blur, because it's, like, yeah. real close. You know, it's only six inches away from that camera that's filming right now. Yeah. Uh, Ooh. Oh, and, oh, this is cool. Kind of like when we did the episode about the PTZ camera and I could set positions, I could play around with this little controller here, move the camera into position, and then set a position that is now nice. I can toggle between. Oh, yeah. They go kind of crazy, Ooh. but. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell what's happening here. One of these positions. Does it have a oh, follow they're... you mode too? Yeah, I think one of these positions is set to track me as a human oh yeah this is great and that's nice because you're getting full image quality while it does it unlike with, yeah with like the the studio display which is this huge wide camera that it just crops to move around yeah well it's like that expensive ptz camera is cool but it can't auto track me right. the way that this can and so how much does this insta 360 cost so it looks like they're actually both two ninety nine. The Insta three sixty is on sale right now. I don't know if that's Christmas or Black Friday or whatever, but it's like two eighty five. So a little bit on sale. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're they're both in the same price class, but it looks like this this Insta three sixty's got a few more tricks up its sleeve and is given a much more pleasing image. Yeah, I mean we haven't even touched the the image settings yet. But like I'm just kind of amazed that it doesn't have all the settings of a PTZ camera and it can't you know, I can't like put it on my network uh, a mile away from where I'm broadcasting. But right. for three hundred dollars, the fact that it could just track me automatically, I I like the idea that I could use this for a live stream. Like I'm thinking about a live stream I want to do where I would I would have a couple lockdown cameras. But what if I do want to like walk around a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. It's zooming and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's not going to be a perfect. Uh, Perfect production quality, but actually, I mean, it moves pretty quickly. <laughs> it keeps me in focus. It's a little distracting, actually, how fast it moves. But yeah, I think our friend Adam uh, showed a rig that he was working on at work, and he had three of these Insta 360s going for a live stream. I can see that being kind of a nice poor man's, you know, broadcast setup, right? <laughs> well, especially just that from your computer, without getting up, you could. You could control these things, which actually I'm trying to control it right now. I have to turn off the tracking first, I think. Yeah, now I can move these around. Yeah, I mean, if you just locked all these down and then from your seat could sit here and do this, this is kind of cool. And then it has a whiteboard mode, which when I think when I click that, what's it about to do? I don't know. Maybe if it it's looking for a whiteboard in the frame and it will always oh, yeah. keep a whiteboard it's look, it's visible a whiteboard. so it won't just yeah yeah i was i think i was don't have a whiteboard right i was confusing it with overhead mode which i've now put it into uh <laughs> it has nothing to look look at though it's trying to like look at my keyboard oh and it's, it's not working it's looking at and it's looking at the top of the monitor yeah although how would but that work basically like if it's it, can you adjust the stand so on the monitor so that it's farther forward i don't know it doesn't look like it Hmm. I am impressed with both these cameras that they have fairly simple, just like clamping mechanisms for, for clamping onto uh, a monitor, monitor. That, that work pretty well. The Insta360, I like that on the back of its clamp, it has a, um, a, a quarter 20 screw. So it'd be real easy to throw this onto a light stand or a tripod. And then the Opal C1, I'm not sure if it does. Let me see. 
You would think it would. Uh, it does not have any sort of tripod stand. Oh, wait. Damn, notice. I think I'm wrong. I think you take the clamp off, and it's a you can mount it on tripod. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. The Insta360 on their website does. They have a tripod kit you can buy with it as well. So, Yeah. So let's see if there's any major image settings to mess with on the Insta. I mean, I can turn off auto white balance, and now I can, like, dial it in exactly. But the auto seems to be working really well. I can mess with brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness. Uh, I'm trying to, is it also, it is a 4K camera, is that right? It looks a yeah. little oh, softer except, maybe than the Right now Opal? I'm actually only sending out 1080. Let me send out 4K and see if it looks different. It's frozen. There it goes. And it's like brighter. Oh, I got a moment. weird crop now. Oh, yeah. Now you're seeing the whole thing. Let me uh, fix it. Uh, fit to screen, right? Yeah. Now you're seeing it normal again. But it looks okay. effectively the same, right? It looks the same to me, yeah. Yeah. Not quite as sharp as the Opal. Yeah. Yeah, I think, like, I got both these cameras... I, I mean, they both both made a similar pitch that they could, you know, they use AI to, to look really pretty. And uh, so I got both of them, but I was not expecting that I needed the gimbal control, and that's kind of blown me away about this camera. So I think I instantly prefer the, the Insta360. <laughs> and, and, and the company is Insta360. I don't even really know who they are. Do you? Well, they make a bunch of 360 cameras, like... Uh, oh, they make some very exciting 360 cameras, and then I guess they also make this webcam product. So I think technically this is called the Insta360 Link, right? That is correct. Yes. Oh, and you can shoot in portrait mode with it for like TikTok type videos, mm. and it'll track you and stuff. So you can imagine trying to shoot a dance routine or something where it keeps you framed up while you go. At least that's what they're showing on their website. I'm scrolling through right now. I wonder if I can right now have it turn itself. How do I do that? I don't know. You'd think that'd be in gimbal control. Wait, there is a turn button. What does that do? Oh, that just went back to the preset position. Oh, interesting. So whiteboard mode literally locks in on a whiteboard in the screen and crops and skews it. So if it's at an angle, it skews it so it's flat and rectangular. Right. It's kind of clever. Well, that's my understanding too of the desktop view. And it may just be that I have my desk in a weird position and the camera couldn't find it. But I think, and my desk is black, which probably doesn't help. Um, but I think it's supposed to look down, not perfectly straight down, but at an angle and then unskew that for you. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. I, I can't imagine the quality is great when you do all that, but. It's yeah, but if all you're trying to do is show what you're working on or something, I bet it works pretty good. Again, yeah. most of the people using these things probably aren't doing it for production broadcast like we are, but more work meetings and things like that, right? Yeah. One thing I didn't notice on the Insta360 was, do I have bokeh control? I... Surely you do. Yeah, you would think so. I feel like it's showing me less image settings than the Opal C1 does, which in some ways is like nice to have less things to scroll through, but I'm kind of surprised I don't see that. Well, there's a sharpness control, but I doubt that's that's actual sharpness. That's not like bokeh. Yeah, I feel like I'm missing something here, but that's all I see. Yeah. I don't see it. It looks like the the Insta360 has got a half inch sensor, which is pretty big, right? How big is the Micro Four Thirds sensor? Three quarters of an inch or something? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, the Opal says the sensor is 7.86 millimeters, which is what, like a third of an inch or something? Uh, 7.86 millimeters to inches. 0.3 inches. Okay. So the 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 Insta 360's got the bigger sensor. One thing I've found with the face tracking on this camera is, and this is just like a personal preference thing, is I feel like it's pretty much putting my eyes in the middle of the frame. Yeah. 
and it's like can i just teach not how this? you like <laughs> yeah can you can here's I, the my preferred <laughs> framing can i teach this camera that i want it to do rule of thirds like I'd, I'd like you to put my eyes not here but here um I mean, I wonder if just me moving it. Am I slumping? You guys, I get yelled at after every podcast because by the end I've gotten too low in the frame and Griffin tells me to. You're always slouching a little bit. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah, that's that's the one thing. That's my one feedback for this camera is I need a way to teach it rule of thirds. Like once once we do this, if I've set the gimbal, if I now click tracking, I want you to stay there, which it's already... Well, it's like almost respecting it, but no, not really. It's, I feel like it's going to put me right back in the middle. Yep, there it goes. Like, this is not, this, come on, don't they know this is like not cinematic or like interesting? <laughs> they don't. They don't. They're just trying to yeah. keep you in frame, buddy. Yeah. Goals it, are different. Yeah. So what do you think? The, are, do these have a use case for you or is it you've got too many big cameras to, to mess around with this? I think I definitely want to keep the Insta360 link, but it still doesn't solve the original problem I set out to solve. Like this camera, I discovered, oh, wow, I really like this as like a live casting camera because it can do some, you know, I like that it moves around. I still don't want to recommend that for most people, though. Most people that just want to like record a podcast like ours without buying a $1,000 camera or $2,000 camera, and they just want it to stay in focus and like look decent the whole time. And the Insta360 doesn't give you that bokeh look that people want. You know, it doesn't mimic yep. a DSLR at all. And then let me flip back to the Opal C1. The Opal C1 is more like what I want, but is it just because I'm not, my lighting's not good? I mean, should I, let me just turn down my light a bunch and put this thing back in auto and see what it does. That's a good good thing to try. For like a normal person. So let's just put it back into, I don't know, do I have to manually, like for each setting, tell it to like stop doing manual settings? Let's turn off manual exposure, manual contrast, manual white balance. So I think it's all auto again, right? And then what happens if I just turn off my light entirely? Now I'm only backlit. Which is a it's, common I look, scenario. I still look yellow, but then again, I do have a yellow light behind me. Let me. Are you back in an auto mode? Yeah, I'm in auto mode. Okay, so here's just normal room light. Yep. Which the color is starting to look normal, I think, again. Absolutely. Yeah, the color matches what we're seeing on the 360. It might have been that I was throwing a big yellow black light at it and it was getting, or backlight at it and it was getting confused. Uh, let me turn this light back on. And instead of 90% intensity, let's put it at 40. Even that might be kind of bright for this camera. <laughs> yeah, but it, it looks better. Yeah. You're still a little pale, but you know, you are pale. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I always have this problem with the, the way my skin looks on camera because the camera's trying to expose my hair properly and everything else. I have darker yeah. hair and lighter skin. Um, but, I mean, it is staying in focus, right? Oh, It always yeah, looks like so. it's in focus, which is like that's what people need it to do. Yep. But I don't know. It's can still we, hard for me With to... this lighting, can you cut over to the Insta360 now? Let's see. Insta 360 is now looking somewhere entirely different. (laughs) It got bored and started looking at something else. Yeah. Oh, he was trying to track me. That's why. Oh, because you got up. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's starting to look a little pinker, though, than the other one. It might just Uh, have the images are very close now, I think. Yeah. Go back again. Well, the opal still looks very yellow compared to. and, And white. Yeah. Throw the background blur on full on the opal. Okay, focus turned all the way up. It's kind of infringing on my eye a little bit, though, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think the Insta360 Link wins this one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if the the Opal's ready for prime time. I guess I do want to know what other people are 
shooting with and if you've had good results i'd love to know in the comments what webcams out there you're all playing with um now i want an insta 360 link that might be easier than my full setup although for the podcast i'm always going to get out the big camera so might as well leave it hooked up right yeah that's my problem here you want to see the uh oh you have a studio display camera right yeah I can add wow, that. Real can we quick. see that? Will that will that record? Are you able to show that to the audience or no? Yeah, I think I could show that. Let me. Uh, I just have to add it. Uh, studio cam. Might be so nice just to turn. do a quick run through the studio display, the Opal, and the Insta. Bam, bam, bam. So I'm turning my lights back to where they were. Okay. All right. There's my studio display camera. So studio cam, Insta360, they look very similar. The Insta360 looks higher res. And then the Opal C1. Something's wrong doing with the too Opal. Much- like something's not set up right or something, right? I don't know. One thing I'll say about the Opal is that it's constantly trying to install new software and constantly failing to do it. It asks me like every day and then I do it manually and it still says like, Hey, I need to install the new software. It's like, annoying. (laughs) yeah. All right. So are we going to see some more live streams with Griffin then featuring the Insta 360 link? Yeah. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get the live streams going again and definitely bring the, I mean, that's actually what the setup was. I, I was starting to, set up in this direction because i want to do an unboxing video uh which Ooh, maybe will tell come us out what before you're unboxing or is it secret uh no i can talk about it because i bet it will be out before this podcast uh i, I right. got a backpack that i want to unbox i love backpacks oh. <laughs> don't we all what, like is, it? what is it what is it what is it uh it's from a company called brevite or brevity hmm. don't know that one yeah is this something you ordered or something they wanted you to check out they wanted me to try it out, and I can't turn down a, a backpack. I love no. Who, send who me could? all the backpacks. <laughs> yeah. Well, should we uh, thank our sponsor? I absolutely think we should. Handy Filmmakers is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your filmmaking business. A feature that I've been using on my Squarespace site a bunch in the last week, it's not even like the fanciest feature. It's just URL mappings. There's a whole page where I can point any URL on my website to any other URL. And I feel like I've been messing in here a bunch this week because I have a class that I do an affiliate link for and they just switched up their affiliate company. So I had to go in and change the link, but it was so handy because instead of having to change like everywhere that the link appears on my site, everywhere on my site, it's just griffinhammond.com slash class. And so I go into URL mappings and I just change what slash class forwards to. Goes to, yeah, Yeah, and so now it forwards to something else. And then also this week I've registered for the Chicago Marathon. I'm gonna run the marathon this year and I'm raising money I'm fundraising during it. And so I set up a forwarding URL, griffinhammond.com slash Chicago. So instead of having to share this like really long and convoluted URL, the URL mappings part of my website is that that setting effectively is like a link shortener that I am constantly using. In fact, if I scroll down my URL mappings, I can see that I have 55 unique URLs. So would no. you say Squarespace is helping you run your filmmaking business? Because it sounds like it is. <laughs> I would definitely say that, Nick. <laughs> Perfect. So you can check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Griffin to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I'm wondering if I have a griffinhammond.com slash Squarespace. Squarespace. <laughs> you should check. And if you don't, how quickly could you make one? I Very can make quickly. one right now. <laughs> and I've learned the other thing I do is I always make sure to make two because uh, it's it's case sensitive. Uh, so ah. like for Chicago, for example, it made sense to do a lowercase Chicago and an uppercase or, or at least uh, what, are, what are they called? Sentence case or word case? Uh, so where's the first uh, letter? They call that uh, 
Camel case? What's camel case? This, this is why people tune in to our grammar podcast. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> camel case uh, is I, where you you have no spaces, but you capitalize every word. Is that what you're talking about? I guess. I don't know. City case, Ooh. where you just capitalize cities? <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is fascinating. Uh, but before we go today, I'm wondering, do you want to show people all these yes. cool... <laughs> do you know what I'm going to say? <laughs> I know exactly what you're going to say. We're talking about your uh, your AI selfies. Yeah, so uh, all, all around the internet has been this Lenza AI. It's an iOS app where you upload like 10 to 20 selfies of yourself and then it uses stable diffusion some of that artificial intelligence stuff we were talking about before to create like these hilarious and scary and awesome avatars <laughs> of you so i decide and you have to pay for it and i just said it's too cool not to at least check out so i paid my ten dollars or whatever and got i think a hundred different avatars so it has like i think it's like five or ten different like themes and then it runs like a bunch of different options in each one so yeah uh, i'm sure people we'll have, to... have seen this all over their feeds because it seems like everyone is doing it right now and is a yeah. hundred like the minimum you can buy no it was like the middle one I, ah. they were very smart they had like small medium and large and of course i bought medium because that's what everybody buys i'm sure yeah um but uh I and mean... then i do notice the themes like everyone who does it seems to have like an astronaut version of themselves and like like do you are these just out of the box this is what it does or do you choose at all what direction no you like don't choose anything all it asks is are you male or female and then i think like boys get astronauts and girls get fairies and stuff like that which is a little sexist and you know maybe maybe not the best but i think that's why they're asking is, yeah i've, I've noticed the, the built-in misogyny <laughs> and bias <laughs> i mean because i think yes. i saw like philip bloom did this and I think he also ran himself as a woman yeah. and got a bunch of that. And it's like all the female ones he shared were like in flowing dresses, really showing off your body in yeah. a way that it was not doing that to the men, of course. Um, right. But. Uh, but we're going to put the sexism <laughs> and things aside for a moment. Uh, and the results are crazy and cool. Like, I, I don't know how you want to show this. Like, I can send some screenshots of all the different things that came out of it. Some of them are great. Some of them are very weird. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I have a couple, like, so I've already changed, like, my Twitter and Mastodon uh, profile picture to one of these. And actually my Zoom for work, my little Zoom profile. So they they make some for some cool profile pictures. It's definitely was worth $12 just to mess around with it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, I did see some, I mean, you see this every time there's like new apps and things. I did see a few people saying like, don't join this thing. Don't share your image because now your image is like part of their network, their neural network or something. Like, are you That's concerned about this works? I know. No. <laughs> but I think people always get freaked out by the language in terms of service, which are always the same. Terms of service on most sites say like, once you give us your photo, it's ours and we put it on our servers because that's how we um, like actually, serve it up to you. At least in the app, when you, you have to upload 10 to 20 selfies and it tells you like it wants shots of your face and not with other people in it because that'll confuse yeah. it and not with pets in it and stuff like that. And it also said um, that as soon as they delivered every, their, the images they create to me, they would delete all my original images. So they said they're not yeah. keeping those. I, yeah. I don't know if it's true. I don't really care if they do, but... Right. Uh, my guess is they do keep the ones they generated. Maybe they can do something with that. I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like, maybe, and maybe, I haven't even read their terms of service, but, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they say that the photos that we generate from you, those are our photos. We can use them however we want to market the product. Uh, but I'm an astronaut now, so I got that going for me. I feel like anytime, there's, there's always, like, I mean, even just like on Facebook, you always see like those viral posts that people share. They're like, I was told by a lawyer friend that I'm supposed to write Facebook. You do not have the right to use my images. Like people always grasp onto something in the terms of service that they find scary yeah. and then have this idea that they shouldn't participate. But I don't know. We are constantly giving away our privacy, doing Internet things. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole can of worms. But uh, yeah, I think it's fun. I think check it out. 
I mean, I'm, I'm another... just going to make this promise right now that if you are a Hey Indie Filmmakers listener, I am not going to steal your images and use them for my marketing for this yeah, podcast. But I will. So that's the <laughs> trade off. I am going to use Nick's Lenza AI photos as marketing for this podcast. I was going to say, do you want me to just send you all of them or do you want to like a screenshot of like. No, I think, you sh- I think you should send me all of them. Okay. I will. Do they come in decent, uh, in decent resolution? What? You know, you had to pay extra if you wanted like super high resolution, and I didn't care enough. Or you had to like sign up for their um, uh, subscription, like ongoing subscription. And I was like, no thanks. So they are 1024 by 1024. So they're not huge, but good enough yeah. for what they are. But yeah, I'll send you all of them because they're fun. Well, and it, it's a fun like follow up to our last episode about AI images because. I should point out that we recorded that episode and then only after the fact, as we got to the end of that episode, I, or maybe it was even after we recorded the episode, I plugged the images of us, our podcast images into uh, Diffusion B, which could take yeah. a source image and then reinterpret it. And they're all horrifying. Uh, but I also, <laughs> I also think our experience has been that Diffusion B doesn't get the, the nice, beautiful results that like... Um, Mid Journey does, and it definitely doesn't do as well as uh, as Lenza AI does. Well, uh, the, so what's I interesting use... is Diffusion B uses Stable Diffusion, and Lenza AI uses Stable Diffusion. So it's actually the same yeah. engine underneath. It's just they've figured out how to tweak it and get the results they're looking for. So there's definitely some skill involved in getting uh, getting this stuff out. And they might be using a newer version because I think Diffusion B was still stuck on an, in an older model. But yeah. Also, yeah. It also comes down to the prompts. I mean, they may just have, you know, the prompts figured out. They and that's figured kind of out the, the the 20-word prompt that gets these yeah. kind of cool pictures. Well, and that's the genius of their business model is that they're not even doing that much that's creative. I mean, like, once they figured it out for one person and it worked, it's like, this is the product. You just run these oh, 50 I bet prompts. they made millions and millions of dollars over the past week. And they'll probably be done in a month because, you know, better stuff's going to come out. But good for yeah. them for jumping on it. Um, yeah. I have an unrelated question for you. Yeah. So, I, I don't know if I mentioned on... Did I mention on the podcast I bought a pinball machine? You did not mention this on the podcast. You told okay. me, though. So, I I got a pinball machine, and I'm having a ton of fun with it, okay? It's shockingly <laughs> fun. And I was thinking, it would be fun to, like, shoot video of playing pinball. Like, I was thinking, like, I'm really bad at it, and I bet if I, like, uploaded how I play, somebody could, like, tell me. And I was like, oh... You could probably like live stream pinball and sure enough i googled and lots of people stream playing pinball and i was like that'd be fun and i was like they all have these really good shots like straight down of the pinball field or whatever like what's an easy way to get a camera up high shooting straight down what what would you recommend there well it's funny is i, I just looked up because like just minutes before this podcast i had a camera mounted on a boom arm above this table uh, which is what I want to do for my unboxing video. Uh, so that's why I have this boom up there. Um, for me, that works really well because the boom, it, it's like almost, it's up at my ceiling right now and it can extend out like five so or six So it's like feet. on a light stand and then with an extension boom on it, basically? Yeah, and then the only thing you would need is room on the other side of the light stand for the other half of the boom, except it's weighted, so it doesn't have to be like half of it, but you might need like a foot or two clearance on the yeah. back and then a, uh, and then a weight, weight of some kind to hang on there. Yeah. Like a little sandbag. Okay. You have to send me a link of what you've got. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's your best bet unless you have a way to like actually clamp to something on the ceiling. Right. Which I don't, it's like in our family room loft area. Right. So I'm not going to like permanently do anything, right. but I just thought it might be neat. I probably won't ever even do it, but if anybody wants to see some pinball, bad pinball play, let me know. Well, and, I imagine, I don't know if other people do this in their live streams. Does anyone put like those kind of like in poker tournaments, they have those little tiny cameras looking at people's cards. Like, could you put little tiny cameras like inside the machine? Inside the machine? Maybe. Why not? Maybe kind of cool. I see the ball I have flying. It seems like most of the professional, or I don't even know if they're professional, but the people who are good at streaming this, like they remove the glass from the top of the pinball machines. Yeah. They have no glare. So you really could get some cameras in there, maybe. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now I got to make a pinball video. And now you got you to gotta amp up the lighting, too. Like the lighting inside the pinball sh- machine is probably not enough. So you got to 
put I, installed it's got some pretty crazy lighting <laughs> it's all it's a new one so it's all leds and there's a million yeah. lights and colors and it's cool all right cool, i'm man. excited i'll watch all right sounds good thank you yeah anything else going on we have our griffin hammond membership program yet no <laughs> no all right well we'll think on that some more yeah all right my friend we'll talk to you soon yeah bye bye hello can you hear me and see me can you see me when i switch cameras oh wait there we go